to what appears to be a brighter spot for Massachusetts in this whirlwind of changes under Donald Trump, the Green Line extension, which is looking a little more likely today to get its federal go-ahead. The project is reportedly among a list of 50 infrastructure efforts that the Trump administration is prioritizing. The proposed expansion of the Green Line, as you know, into Somerville and Medford has been delayed several times, most recently, recently because of a billion-dollar budget overrun that forced the scaled-back redesign. Securing federal funding for the project to continue is still a big hurdle to move forward, of course. He who giveth can taketh away. And that was certainly on Governor Charlie Baker's mind last night when he delivered a State of the Commonwealth address, which focused a lot on the merits of bipartisan compromise. Too much of what passes for political dialogue these days isn't dialogue at all. It's talking points, character assassination, and deliberate misrepresentation. And we live in a time where what you oppose seems much more interesting than what you support, where compromising is often viewed as an act of weakness when in fact it is a sign of strength. Joining me are Boston Globe business columnist Shirley Leung. Hey, Shirley, nice Hi. to see you. Jessica Taco, a partner at Boston-based lobbying firm Haynes & Associates, active in Republican politics, close to the Pence family, and recently attended the Trump inaugural. Good to see you, Jessica. Thanks so much for being here. Sanctuary cities, defunding them, was on the, one of the executive orders today. You know, it's Boston, Chelsea, Somerville, Cambridge, that sort of stuff. Late this afternoon, uh, Marty Walsh said, we won't back down from protecting our people no matter what. Should we not be worried that federal funding is going to be reduced if Donald Trump is true to his word, that we here are going to lose federal funding because of statements like Marty Walsh's? Well, I think that if you look at the recent poll, that 79 percent of Massachusetts people want us to be working with the, the folks in Washington on the other side of the aisle. They want us to be working with the administration and reaching across the aisle. Then I think that all of our leaders, whether they be Marty Walsh, the governor, any of our reps, need to be thinking about ways to focus on the policy and giving their impact, and their input in a constructive way. But if they don't back down, he's not backing down. Kurt Tony in Somerville is not backing down. I mean, a whole host. If they don't back down, one must assume Trump means what he says. We could suffer federal losses, no? I think they have to go through that dialogue together, and they have to take their case to the president. Isn't it also possible the jubilation about this green line, the billion dollars moving through the pipeline, it, that could stop moving through the pipeline if the president of the United States is unhappy, couldn't it? It could, but right now the green line is on the Trump's uh, 50 uh, priority, 50 infrastructure projects on um, his priority list. So, you know, I think uh, Charlie Baker this uh, recently got word that um, it is on the priority list. So that's good. It's, it's a good for thing. Now. For now. It's a good thing. No, no, it's a good thing. You're an but Indiana the, woman, correct? Yeah. That's how you know the Pence family. You work for them. You know them personally. Yes. You were at the Indiana Bowl. And there was somebody at your table who we know. Is that correct? There are a lot of people. At my well, who table do we know who's know. rather tall, who's so, rather prominent? Charlie Baker was there. Was it like a stranger and his wife, and a stranger in a strange land, or was Baker comfortable? And that's saying you know that he said very critical. He didn't vote for uh, for the Pence Trump ticket. He has been very critical, calling some of his comments outrageous and that sort of thing. Was he comfortable in that setting, or some anxiety? Absolutely. Our group was a, a delegation of 27 Massachusetts businesses that were there to influence policy. And whether or not those businesses supported Trump, they were there to, to mm -hmm. have some influence and some discussion. And it was just natural that if you had such a strong group from Massachusetts, that Governor Baker would be there. Speaking of being there, he was not there at the Women's March. And you took him the task, I think yeah. it's safe to say, in a rather tough comment. What was the thrust of what you had to say there, sure? Well, here was this, uh, I was there, and almost every pol major politician was either in Boston or in D.C. for the march, and Charlie Baker was nowhere to be found. I mean, I was hoping he would be there because he's such a champion of women's rights, and what's upsetting to me is that he was just down the street. The, the, the march was at the Hines, or the march was at the Common. He was at the Hines at the Mass Municipal Association. He wasn't even the keynote speaker. He was just there hanging out with uh, municipal officials, and then he drove past the march to the state house to work on the budget in the state of the Commonwealth. So he he could have tweeted. Oh, fine, he's busy. He can't be there. He could have sent Karen Polito. Which could he have did sent, not do. He correct? could have sent a member of his cabinet. He well, didn't even Karen know. Karen Polito had a family commitment. She had a family thing. commitment, but, but he didn't even know in, in the initial go around. His, his staff didn't know if anyone from the administration had attended the march. Yeah, and, and you, you were strong in your words, Congressman Moulton. He's done nothing to push back on Trump's radical agenda in that context. Is anyone really surprised Governor Baker wasn't standing with Massachusetts women on Saturday? He really is walking a tightrope. Yeah, isn't but he, I, don't, I mean, I look. It, he absolutely appreciates women's issues. Yeah. I think he's made it very clear through his actions. He's a champion of that. But Saturday, you also have to 
admit that it was a Democratic rally against President Trump and against a lot of the things that he stands for. That's not necessarily a place where we need to have all of our elected officials when we're trying to have some moderation and we're trying to have some communication with the administration. That was a very polarizing event. I, I, you know, look, Governor Baker has helped us have 120,000 new jobs in the last two years. Unemployment is at the lowest level it's been in the last 20 years because he's doing his job, because he's with the Mass Municipal Association where we, they've said that we've got the greatest record in 50 years with cities and how we're accommodating But he them. could have called Jeff Beckwith, who runs the MMA, and said, uh, Jeff, can you do this an hour earlier so I can at least make an appearance at the Women's but March? I, just, I don't think his place is at a Democratic rally. So you don't rally. think he should have been there at all? It's a Democratic rally. He it was won, very partisan. He did very well amongst women a couple of years ago. Martha Coakley, a woman, obviously, only mm -hmm. beat him amongst women by 11 points. You don't think not appearing... There, and you say it was polarizing, but it had millions of women across the country. You don't think that hurts him two years from now? Absolutely not. He, he realizes that women's issues are much bigger than that rally. Women are interested in having jobs. They're interested in health care for their family, national security. All the policies that Charlie Baker is putting forth. Health care for the their Commonwealth. family. Did you hear the speech last night? Yeah, I was there. How come there was nothing about, for example, protecting, as he said before, Obamacare, the repeal is a great threat to lots of people in the state. Not a word. The immigration order came down today. The walls, uh, uh, refugees uh, stopping. Not a word about that. you got to believe, particularly when he's mentioned some of the stuff in the past, it's because he's concerned about not offending the Trump That's administration. That's right? I think he's made it very clear that he'll he'll disagree with them anytime, and he's done that. He was one of the first elected officials to come out as a Republican and not support the he party was the first. candidate. He was the first governor. And so, I, I but mean, Obama, he he's a health care executive. But that being said. On health care, what I understand that was happening was, you know, he put out a letter last week that was very well written with all of his beliefs. But the other thing is, President Trump hasn't come out yet. He says he will with his policy on repeal and replace that's specific. So he doesn't necessarily have something to react to yet. You I think it that? would have been a little preemptive. I was going to say, I thought Baker's uh, speech was a big disappointment last night. How so? Yes, he, he uh, you know, uh, c carried the flag of bipartisanship in Massachusetts. But no one's complaining about the lack of bipartisanship here in Massachusetts. Um, we actually work really well together. And I think that he did not address the biggest anxieties in this Democratic state, like which what? is immigration and the repeal of health care. And then he, he goes on to kind of brag about how, you know, I will stand against, uh, you know, raising, uh, bro I will not, uh, you know, raise broad-based taxes. And then the next day, he delivers a budget where it's $300 million in um, health care fees. I mean, I actually think the fees, you know, it should, he, sh he, should, he should be honest about what's happening here about raising taxes or raising revenue from businesses. I'd like to continue because your head's about to pop off. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that, but we got to go. Shirley, it is great to see you. Jessica, thanks so much for your Thank time. You. Really appreciate Thank you so it. Thanks much. for being here.